OK, so uh, let's start. So one thing I want to comment on, um, it's a kind of correction or clarification. So, uh, so last time we talked about uh, the geometric satake. Uh, I'm just repeating something I mentioned in the problem session, but since not everyone was here, I want to uh, do it again. Um, Sataki equivalence, which is uh, an equivalence between the category S and which is uh, Perot sheaves uh, G of C of T equivariant. On the fine Grossmanian. And this category is equivalent to <coughs> representations of the dual group. And I emphasize that uh, works for uh, any coefficients. And in fact, it works over more general coefficients, but. Uh, I am interested in this case when it's closed field, uh, but of any characteristic. And uh, okay, so far so good. But uh, just one other comment: I, it was that uh, I said that um, um, if I have uh, I C. Gur lambda bar, and I look at its torque at x mu, and I said this uh, dimension of this is uh, always dimension of the weight component, but in this form it only works. Uh, uh, over C over characteristic zero field, and in general, this dimension is equal to. So you can take the corresponding. So uh, yeah, this dimension, sorry, is equal to the all the characteristic. There is some si overall sign here, which it's easy to specify. It depends on the. Uh, I guess parity of uh, <coughs> uh, pairing between lambda and two rho check or, so, or something like this. But uh, the point is that this is the Euler characteristic of the stock. So in characteristic zero, it's a specific yes. Part. Not no, in characteristic zero, it's concentrated in uh, uh, several degrees, but all of the same parity. So yes, uh, so in characteristic zero, uh, it's. Um, Uh, sort of H i of this I C at X mu is non zero only for I of a fixed parity depending on lambda and mu. So, so this, so this is so called, so, so called this is so called parity vanishing uh, phenomenon which is No, that I don't know. So is, is no. no, but because it's more subtle, and yeah, we don't have time to discuss it. It's, it's an interesting kind of discussion of. I, mean, I said this is a quality of dimension, and it's not. I'm not saying there's a canonical isomorphism, and so let's not go into this. But uh, yeah, one can. 
if you want to interpret the dimension in, in, in these terms, probably possible, but we can discuss this afterwards. OK, so. Um, but so, um, so I started this uh, discussion last time, and so. Um, so if uh, uh, k has characteristic 0, uh, then uh, rep gl and hence s is semi-simple. So the equivalence is only interesting I I if you sort of, yeah, it's only interesting if you take into account things like tensor structure. But if just as an occurrence of abelian categories, it doesn't have much information because any two semi-simple abelian categories with the same cardinalities uh, or the sets of irreducible objects are equivalent. But if a characteristic uh, uh, of k is uh, p, which is more than 0, this is interesting the equivalence of abelian categories is already interesting. And um, uh, because the category is not uh, semi-simple, well, maybe just to fix ideas, the simplest example showing it's not semi-simple is if you take G to be SL2 and then you take the polynomials into variables in of degree uh, let's maybe uh, M sort of P so if you take polynomials uh, of degree P then uh, the, uh, as we all know, the uh, raising to pth power is linear, is a linear uh, operation in characteristic p, and so you have this exact sequence so v p uh, so so if uh, I'll just uh, fix this notation if. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah, a a additive. I meant linear additive. But of course, it's compatible with the multiplication by scalars via Frobenius. And so if I take v is just a span of uh, x k2 with the basis x, y, then we have this. Uh, zero to uh, v to the p, which is the span of x to the p and y to the p. And it goes to mp. And then one can check. Um, so if I use this uh, standard notation, which I already actually used, v lambda, so vi is the irreducible representation with highest weight, uh, uh, highest weight i. Highest weight i. So that um, v is uh, v1. And sorry, actually, I think here it will be more traditional to use this notation. But then, uh, sort of this uh, Frobenius twist of v, the span of x to the p and y to the p, is uh, is. It's kind of obvious that the uh, group still acts irreducibly there. Well, uh, but. Uh, yeah, on the highest weight, I mean, the weight of the highest weight is now p. 
And then it's easy to see that the quotient is also reducible and has weight p minus 2. Um, so, um, yeah, and it's also obvious that this is uh, non-split because the um, here the highest weight is uh, right here. So what is so x to the p minus one y is not invariant under the. this uh, matrix, so sending y to x, well, y to y plus x. So um, hmm? so we have a non-split, so we have a non-split uh, sequence. So this is the easiest one to write down. So it's 0 to Vp to Mp to. Uh, but, but yes, but it's uh, easy to check that this Vp minus 2 is, in fact, irreducible. I mean, this quotient Mp by this is, in fact, irreducible, so it is the irreducible representation at highest weight p minus 2. And then from this, you can uh, produce various other exact sequences. For example, you can non-split exact sequences. For example, if, um, if you look at um, SL2, then this is kind of the first highest weight for which uh, something interesting starts to happen, because until then, it's all uh, um, the reducible representations look in the same way, and there are no x ones be between them. But in particular, if p is more than two, then still, I mean, v one tens of v one is still as we are uh, used to. It's kind of the trivial representation v zero, which is k plus v two. But so uh, I'm saying this because if we twist the tensor it with Vp and uh, quotient, so it's like so um, tensor with Vp, which is again V1 for Abinus twisted, and kill uh, this thing V2. Rubinius twisted. So get a non trivial extension <coughs> zero V one zero, so the trivial representation and there will be something. And then uh so yeah, uh the 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 tensor product of uh, Vp tensor Vp minus 2 will be actually, again, irreducible. So there are some formulas which actually are easier in characteristic P than in characteristic 0. So this is a special case of the so-called Steinberg tensor product theorem. So this is. So of course. Such a formula never holds for representation of SL2 in characteristic 0 unless one of the highest weights is 0. But here it works. OK, so uh, in fact, um, <coughs> um, uh, <coughs> this is an illustration of the so-called uh, linkage principle. So uh, representations of the um, <coughs> of 
the uh, group, uh, they are not um, um, the category is not semi-simple, so there are some non-trivial kind of uh, extensions, uh, but not uh, every pair of reducible representations uh, admits a non-trivial extension. In fact, one can break um, break them into blocks. Um, uh, or it was the same in, in the, uh, the the category breaks into as a direct sum of well summons which are called blocks. In other words, if you uh, take a graph whose vertices are reducible representations and you connect them when there, uh, there is a non-trivial x1 in either direction, then uh, this graph has many connected components. Um, and uh, in fact, you can say when two representations are in the same block. And so for example, uh, uh, so, well, I mean, Kairos, I was interchangeably talking about blocks in the set of reducible representations and summons in the category, but uh, uh, if you think of block as a subcategory, then uh, it's just a subcategory generated by the corresponding irreducible representations. And so, um, so blocks in the set irreducible representations so the same as uh, connected components of a graph a graph whose vertices are uh, ir irreducible representations And edges uh, when there exists and when I mean x one in either direction is non zero. Okay, so uh, and and uh, what I've just shown to you is uh, that we um, so have just seen what that um, VP and VP minus 2 are in the same block. Uh, in one block. And then likewise, uh, V0 and V2 P minus 2. And in fact, the general answer is Um, the blocks are related to the orbits. So maybe I can say right away, in fact, the block of V0 it um, consists of vi such that i is either 0 or minus 2 mod 2p. And um, 
in general, um, uh, these are related to the uh, orbits of the um, Uh, so yeah, so let me say general answer for any G about the structure of the block. I actually will describe only some blocks which are called regular blocks. Um, so consider uh, the action of a fine while group uh, on the set of weights. Where, um, uh, which is uh, uh, kind of have well, so, 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 so this is the group generated by reflections, and, uh, and it's a semi product of uh, the finite while group by R, which is the root lattice. But this um, action has. So, so it has an obvious action, right? When you double your x by reflections and r is x by translations. So that's not exactly the one, the, the action we uh, consider here. It's, you have to slightly modify it uh, in, in two ways. So it's centered at the weight minus rho and dilated by p. And uh, maybe <laughs> first dilated. And then uh, shift to the minus row. In other words, um, yeah. In other words, uh, so so this uh, finite while group acts by reflection centered at uh, minus rho, and um, that by p means that uh, some lambda in R would send. I mean, these translations are not translation by lambda, but mu plus p lambda, right? So for SL2, uh, of course, uh, lambda is z. Uh, for, uh, yeah, and uh, r is 2z, and rho is 1. And so if you think about it, you know, reflecting. 0 at minus 1, you get minus 2, so we recover this answer. Uh, so a lambda is, of course, z. r is 2z. And uh, rho is 1. More relevant, minus rho is minus 1. And what else? And of course, W is generated by reflection. So. Lambda is what? Lambda is in all roots. But the point is that here, I mean, VI is only defined for. Which lambda? I mean, here, OK, maybe my notation was not. What's notation for uh, new? Yeah. Alpha. Alpha, OK. But the highest weights, so, so yeah, that's a good point. H uh, highest weights, they, they have to be dominant. So you're saying that, uh, yeah, that's a good point. So the block. So maybe I'll write it here. Uh, it's uh, returning to the general situation. So, okay, sure, sure. So, uh, so the e block as a set of irreducible representations, it's in bijection with um, W affine orbit. So let's denote this by dot action. 
some <coughs> lambda intersected with the set of dominant weights. So, um, wait, in fact, sorry, I didn't finish the wording. So, I mean, so I said consider, but then I, I didn't say uh, the, uh, yeah, so I didn't make the conclusion. And so uh, the conclusion is, um, sorry, maybe I'll erase this and make it a statement again, because there is yet another subtlety. So. Um, and so fact, uh, theorem is, uh, you can look it up in Janssen's book on algebraic groups, that um, uh, if, um, if uh, lambda is regular in the sense that it, uh, the orbit um, of lambda is uh, i.e. the orbit of <coughs> respect to that action is free, then the block of lambda, block of V lambda, it cons consists of V mu such that two conditions hold. So first, it's a dominant weight, because it's just, uh, uh, yeah, uh, just, uh, the, the just in case in characteristic 0, the highest weight of a fine-dimensional representation is uh, is um, uh, has to be dominant. And also, mu uh, has to lie in the orbit. And yeah, because like there are also s singular blocks, and then there is some subtlety there, meaning that. No, uh, I mean uh, the singular block also. Th no, the point is that if I uh, consider irregular orbits, it will also be the um, corresponding things will also generate a, s a summand, but this summand may be further decomposable. And, and so, yeah, gets by yeah, and then you have some inductive kind of procedure. So, no, oh, oh, yes, it's a final. So there are infinitely many blocks, even for assault, uh, too. Yeah, it's important what's the power of p dividing uh, i plus 1. R right, but i plus 1 over p is not equal to minus 1. Uh, yeah. Yes, yes. And so here there is a source of infinite amount of confusion. So uh, the point is that. Uh, Uh, so, so there's this uh, remark that, uh, yeah, so, so such blocks are called regular blocks because they're regular orbits. Uh, so um, um, well, by standard, um, yes, remark, uh, so if you have some, uh, Uh, is an uh, is a well maybe let's say is in a, a free orbit free uh, w fine orbit um, uh, but uh, not necessarily dominant then. Uh, obviously, uh, by standard kind of uh, <coughs> story about <coughs> group generated by reflections, there is a unique W now in the finite while group. Uh, 
such that uh, w dot mu is in lambda plus. So uh, the e, e, e wraps in the regular block. Ion by junction with W F ion mod W, which <coughs> in turn can be, uh, since it's a semi, semi direct product, in turn can be identified with a set of weights. But it's, some way, it's a way to mark representations by weights, well, by the R, which is a sub, sub root lattice in, in finite index uh, subgroup in lambda. And if, if uh, the group is a joint and there is no difference, so there's a way to mark, for, for a joint group, there is a way to mark representations in a block by essentially weights, but it's not by t taking the highest weight. OK, so. Um, OK. So is it too late to change it? OK. Sorry, yes. OK, uh, so, uh, so basically, if we adopt this point, uh, if we want really to understand the structure of the, <coughs> the billion category, we can sort of look at it block by block. And so. Um, so there is a, a different realization of this regular block. Uh, so, so let now. Uh, so, so consider. A regular block. Well, let's call this. Uh, well, let's see if it corresponds to a free orbit uh, lambda, so let's call it so. So it was, uh, yeah, it was dual group, so let's stick to this. Um, so, but yeah, by the way, one more remark here is that um, uh, I said quickly without writing down. So if you want to uh, see that um, blocks, um, if you want to separate uh, things in different W orbits, it's actually easy to do it uh, by just looking at the action of the center of the um, enveloping algebra. So maybe I... Uh, just edit here. So just another remark is that so you have to say something else uh, to to see that things in one uh, regular orbit uh, lie in the same block, and for irregular orbits it won't even be true. But just uh, to separate things. in different W orbits, say for an adjoint group, uh, we uh, enough to look, so look at the action of something which is maybe familiar. W yes, W fine orbits. Uh, look at the action. So Someone like in characteristic zero, you can um, you have a representation of a group. It's also a representation of the Lie algebra. And so you have the, uh, it's OK, the center is bigger, but you have this uh, K of T star mod uh, W, just this familiar thing that, you know, from Harish Chandra isomorphism, but it also exists in this positive characteristic. Uh, but the point is that here you have 
a big um, ideal. Uh, so so it, it will. Um, If you look at the um, points in the spectrum at the characters of this community ring, which uh, can actually arise from such an action, uh, you will see that you know it, it will only corresponds to kind of integral points um, uh, so 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 it's yeah so so basically it will be the usual uh, action of uh, you know cartan on the Wait, and then uh, so we. Yes, yes. So th this will. Yes. So we'll hopefully. Yes. Yes. Okay. So hopefully we'll get to this later. So uh, I'm just saying that uh, if you t take, the, say, for SL2, you can just take the action of Casimir, and uh, you'll see that uh, it will act uh, on. It will, yeah, it will uh, separate uh, like v lambda and v mu, unless uh, uh, you know lambda minus one is plus minus mu minus one mod p. And then you, there is separate uh, issue about two, but that's you can see from the action of the center. And so, in general, like you can. No, they exist. Just at least if P is n is very good, they exist just as you know. Yeah. Yes, but they basically split the regular blocks. And if P is not too small, then Casimir's together with the center of the group. Say if this group is semi-simple, it's fine. And they uh, s split off the regular blocks. OK. No, but that's the point. So, so, so the integral points. Uh, so it's kind of so lambda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This. Yeah. Uh, how did it appear that it's, uh, ah, well, because of this first sentence, because you have the full orbit, but you're only interested in positive weights in this orbit. So every or every so so the, the orbit is free. So the set of points in the orbit can be identified with W F I. Now, if you take some point in the orbit, there is exactly one uh, uh, representative of the corresponding W finite W core set, which is dominant. So so. Yes. So. Uh, So uh, uh, so for us, so maybe for this uh, principal block, right? So so the uh, full uh, orbit it consists of all elements of the form uh, so p well two p uh, n and two p n minus 2. But now we're only interested in uh, n. Well, maybe I'll use another letter, m. And so we are only interested in n, which are non-negative, and m, uh, which is positive. And so, so uh, well, this set is, of course, identified with uh, 
well, in my notation, this is, you know, the, 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 this set is identified with R, and this is SR. So oh. right. But now uh, I'm saying that um, um, maybe, uh, sorry, maybe. Um, so I'm no, I'm, I am no, 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 no. Yeah, it was good, better the first way. But so now I'm just saying that uh, if I take some point here, then uh, there exists. Well, there are these things divisible by p, and then there are things which are ma ma minus two mod p. But if I take uh, so, so, if I take one of them, then I can. Uh, and so if there is some minus one here, then I can. If it's negative, I can reflect it here. So if I take uh, W, I find so the set of things for set of W such that W dot zero is no negative. It's a it's kind of a section of this map. To okay. Yes. Minus m minus two. What? Are? what? Mm. This set is in bijection with e. The set of the thing is clear. So the, this set is in bijection with integers where ah n goes yes right in this notation yes yes that's right. right. Okay, so um, yes. But uh, okay, so now let's uh, get back to this, and so um. Let uh, now uh, g be any, and let's uh, fix. So let wrap of g uh, maybe lambda be a regular block. So lambda is this mark for the orbit. And okay, so we um, um, and so uh, we want to relate this to geometry of the loop group, and of course, again, this is a summoned in rep G. So in fact, we it sort of sits somewhere in inside this geometric Sataki category, but we want something different, um, and uh, so here is. Um, and so, yeah, so maybe for simplicity of notation, so we assume that <coughs> this is a joint, so as you've seen this a little way easier. <coughs> and so, and p is not too small, so p is maybe more than cox to a number. In fact, if p is less than cox to a number, there are no regular blocks, so this is not really an assumption. Um, so, um, so claim. Well, this is the uh, so-called finkelberg mirkovich conjecture, and let me put it this way: so it's a theorem under construction. Uh, with Simon Rich. Uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, that this uh, is um, <coughs> the category of perverse sheaves 
on the fine Grossmannian of G. But now equivariant with respect to not G of 4, but a smaller group. So uh, it's almost the same group as the one which appeared before, namely V Vahori, but with a little additional zero sticking in. So recall that we had this I. So this is Eva Hori in G of C of T. So it's uh, essentially, well, maybe I can uh, write it this way. It's, it's the final barrel times, uh, well, that's the T G of C of T. It's not a good notation, uh, but, uh, but by this I mean the group with, with the Lie algebra t times the positive loop. So this is the positive uh, loops which um, evaluate to 1 at 0. And then, uh, so it contains uh, i0, which is uh, just uh, maximal unipotent. That's a technical kind of little distinct uh, distinction. Huh? Maybe, uh, maybe I should. Yeah, maybe I'll use this notation. So it's uh, g, uh, g of C of T plus. But that's maybe a better notation. So plus means that, again, having value 1 at 0. So in other words, uh, you have a homomorphism from um, I to the maximal torus, and uh, I0 is the kernel. So it's a matrices which are who are uh, entries are um, for SL2 it's uh, like A B T B right this way one plus T A T B C one plus T D where A B C D are <coughs> Taylor series. Okay. Yes. That's a very good point. So there's no dependence on lambda, and uh, the um, the uh, all regular blocks are equivalent as abelian categories. And this is a again a kind of standard theorem in this theory. So uh, translation functors which identify them. So the, the, this you can find in Janssen book on. Yes, and this is another uh, point that we'll discuss. Uh, so, uh, and yeah, maybe that. Uh, so, notice that. Um, so, if you already believe that there is this convolution for covariant sheaves, then you also know. Uh, that so so there is a well maybe the, the the easiest thing to say is that there is a an embedding because like if you if something was equivalent with respect to the bigger group and then you look at a smaller group it's also will be equivalent with a smaller group uh, so the satellite category lies in there but maybe a kind of slightly better thing to look at is that there is a convolution functor. In fact, all sheaves kind of on the Grassmannian, I mean, and it's also known to be exact, actually. This is a wonderful theorem of gates query. So there is a functor of perverse sheaves on the Grassmannian times uh, Geo4, I mean, so this is a Sataki category. Two perverse shifts on the Grassmannian. So again, uh, well, there are kind of two uh, things uh, hidden here. So if you um, look at the derived category of constructible shifts, then this is a purely formal thing. This just write this convolution thing. But there is also 
in this special case for the Grassmannian, it, if you take any perverse shift here and perverse shift here, then you end with perverse shift here. This is a result of Gaitskari, uh, which is based on some yeah, by cycles uh, story. But um, but in particular, it preserves any sort of equivariance on the right. And so you have this point. And so this corresponds to the following. Uh, so in, uh, uh, in characteristic P, you have this Frobenius map. Right? Which raises, so it's an algebraic group, and we can raise all coordinates to the power p. And this is automatically compatible with all the structures, so this is a homomorphism of algebraic groups. Right? And so, um, so in fact, we already used this. So, like, there was this uh, v1, which was this uh, span of x to the p, y to the p. Um, and uh, this is just a pullback under Frobenius, so this is the same as. So if you think about it, so how like the group acts on this span of x to the p y to the p, it's the same as kind of first apply Frobenius, raise all coordinates on the group to the power p, and then act in the usual way on the two-dimensional representation. So. So this pullback under Frobenius, it's sort of, uh, you know, perfectly well-defined functor on the level of uh, representations. And since um, also kind of feature we've seen on this example of SL2, but it also follows from this combinatorics that I described. I mean, maybe, uh, maybe one thing to, to say here is that, you know, so if I uh, pull back under Frobenius, it's obvious that if I pull back on a Frobenius and a reducible representation, I still get an irreducible representation. And it's also not hard to say what's its highest weight. So if I pull back V lambda, I get V P lambda. And then maybe not a, it's not completely a formal uh, uh, corollary, but it's kind of not surprising given the combinatorics that if I had something in the regular block and if I V lambda in the regular block and I um, add P nu, then I get into the same block, I mean, especially under this assumption. Right? So, uh, so there is this fact that um, um, So for M in a regular block, which I call this rep G lambda, and any V in rep G, if I write uh, M, I mean, tensor, well, pull back under Frobenius, and again, this is usually uh, often denoted as this, then this is still in the same block. So now I can answer uh, uh, Pavel's question. Is, uh, so he asked, OK, so what? Uh, how is this compatible with the old story? And the answer, so um, trying to say. So we have an action of the tensor category of rep G on rep G lambda, send, namely V sends M to M tensor 
pullback of Vn to Frobenius, and this is the uh, action. So this corresponds to the action of S on uh, perverse sheaves. Well, inclusion then follows because, you know, you find the minimal generator and you act on it. If lambda is 0, then yes, then, then it's inclusion. So um, uh, maybe it's a, a OK, so maybe I'll just uh, uh, make a comment and then we'll make a break. So, um, so well, as usual, there are Having passed from this Sataki to this other picture, you have gained something and you have lost something. That's how life works. So, uh, yes, this one I just described. Uh, the one I just described, or oh, you find Hecke category meaning? Yes, yes, that's right. Yeah. But yeah. Well, of course, yes. But uh, okay. So first of all, yeah, I want to mention it. Yes. Yeah. So um, yeah. So um, so advantage of this thing is. Um, um, Well, there are several ones, but the one I want to mention is that it kind of relates to the point that uh, 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 Sasha was talking about yesterday that somehow one of the drawbacks of the usual Sataki formalism is that it kind of doesn't extend to the derived case. I mean, <sighs> this topological thing, it sits naturally into some triangulated category. And in the Sataki setting, this triangular category is not a derived category of RAMG. Uh, but um, uh, kind of derived category of this thing, because uh, it has to do with this uh, simple topological factors. These G of four orbits, they have non-trivial topology. And the stabilizers have non-trivial topology. But here, this is a pro-unipotent group. And the orbits are just cells. So these are stratification of Grossmanian by just uh, Schubert cells. And so uh, all the Grossmanian is equal to uh, well this, whatever, I mean, this equivariant derived category. So in practice, this means that you know if you want to compute x between representations, it's reduced some topological calculation. So, so by 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 this uh, theorem, it's the same. I mean, this much you can also write for the Sataki thing, but um, so algebraic x uh, can be computed topologically. Uh, and the uh, well disadvantage uh, is that lost the tensor structure. So drawback no tensor structure. I mean, there is no even tensor structure on the category. So uh, if you kind of want to <coughs> isolate the block, and then you, if you tensor two things in the block, you don't get uh, something in the block. So you can't even ask a question. Huh? You you do not get something in this block. For example, uh, I don't know if you tensor VP minus two with itself, you get you know, something with I guess summoned with highest weight minus four, or at least sub quotient with highest weight, which is minus four mod P, and so it's not there. Um, okay, so. Um, No, 
No, of course you can tensor and you can sort of break down this uh, representation as a sum of uh, various blocks. And then as a sum of representation in various blocks, and you can ask is there sort of a geometric description for that function. And when I was younger, I was hoping that there is one, but I no longer do. Uh, so, uh, okay, so um, uh, and okay, so the one final comment is that uh, maybe I'll say a bit more about this. Uh, <coughs> so there is this uh, analogy with um, uh, between mod p uh, representation theory, mod p uh, representations, and uh, quantum. Uh, I mean, of algebraic group of, of classical kind of things. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, representation theory of quantum uh, groups at uh, a root of unity. And so uh, this principle works very nicely here. And in fact, there is a known result. Uh, I mean, so I have an analog of this, uh, uh, of this, and which is much better documented, known theorem, kind of um, theorem in the literature for. Uh <coughs> for a quantum group uh, at root of unity. So uh, after the break, uh, I will briefly talk about this and then uh, start a new topic about causal duality. Uh, yeah, so maybe uh, uh, let's make a break now, but yeah, if you want to ask a question. Yes, yes. So can you possibly describe tensor structure in terms of a Maybe, but I don't know. You use a nice kind of. I agree with everything you said, but whether one can, whether one can sort of make a nice structure. <laughs> yes. Uh, OK, so let's make a break. continue. So yeah, I just want to say very briefly about this point because it's also um, connect to what uh, Braverman was explaining. I think is it seemed to be out of chalk, but well, I used color chalk. So, <coughs> so it will be more colorful from this point on. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so uh, as I said, this uh, I just want to say this a little bit more precisely. And so, recall uh, from editing those lectures that we have this uh, quantum group. UQ, uh, quantum group, and <coughs> for uh, if Q is a, a, a root of unity of some order, then um, um, we have uh, Lustig's quantum Frobenius uh, well I guess it's called quantum group 
but it's maybe uh, the the best analogy, as I will now explain, is with this hyperalgebra with uh, <coughs> distribution algebra, <coughs> which is enveloping with divided powers. Uh, but okay, so. Um, Because I couldn't find white one, but okay, I can go. Huh? Okay, okay. That's fine. I have some. Okay. So, uh, Lucy quantum Fabinius, which is uh, U Q to the classical enveloping algebra. So there is a somewhat uh, confusing point. Oh, I see. I find it. OK. That's fine. Uh, which I will try to uh, 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 hide. Uh, but let's see if I manage. So um, so and, um, and then there is also this. Uh, so, so, so this is kind of has quantum divided powers. And there is also this uh, uh, so-called Cas de Cancini. So uh, this is no divided powers. <coughs> and so we have a, an embedding from the thing without divided powers. Well, maybe let's call it Q Lustig. And it factors through this restricted thing. So the image has finite dimension, uh, which is usually called small u. And then this, uh, there is this quantum Frobenius to the classical enveloping. So uh, now there is this theorem um, which relates to, uh, so, so, so yeah, this is parallel to uh, the uh, completely classical things in characteristic P, namely, you have distribution algebra on the group, which is the same as divided powers. Well, uh, when I say, oh, sorry, I'm. So it's UG, it goes to the distribution algebra, and then here it goes to the same distribution algebra. So this is just, uh, this distribution thing is covariant with respect to the group. So, so you have the Frobenius homomorphisms, and you have this, and this factors through the so-called restri restricted envelope. Right. So for for SL two, this is generated by uh, so if G is SL two, so U G is uh, generated by E F H. It goes to this distribution algebra which is generated by e to the well n, but it's enough to take p to the r, f, p to the r. And well, for h, you just have to take binomial coefficients. So h times h minus 1. So the idea is that you take those expressions over z, for example. So this is infinitely generated. This is not finitely generated. Yes, n, yes. You can say for every n, but most n are on, on those values of n are relevant. And this goes to the distributions 
1 of g. And uh, this map sends uh, kind of e, uh, it kills e and f, but essentially it sends uh, kind of e to the p to the r minus 1, I guess. Yeah, the idea is that this notation, we use this notation that uh, we should have so x to the n is like x to the n over n factorial. Or something like this. Uh, yeah. That's a good point, yes. Um, but I mean, the, the, the uh, point is that e goes to 0 and f goes to 0. Um, OK, so um, yes, and then there is a, a it factors through this u0 or g where basically uh, this is uh, ug, but modular e to the p, f to the p, and hp. OK, so, um, and uh, I guess Pavel uh, explained the quantum analogs of his formulas, at least for SL2, right? Well, I also said something about this. Oh, OK, sorry. So yeah, I'm sorry for repetition. Uh, OK, so um, so the, wh what I uh, really want to say is that uh, now you have this representations of UQ Lustig. Well, lambda in the sense that you have also a regular block. And this is uh, reverse sheaves I0 on the Grassmannian. So this is a um, um, result. Uh, well, my friends uh, uh, qu quote the uh, paper of uh, our keeper of Ginsburg and myself. But in fact, um <coughs> this was established much earlier by. Um, this is why we are friends. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, Exactly. Um. Hmm? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> um. Don't drink and claim priority. <laughs> um, OK, so um, as an outcome of so-called uh, Lustig program uh, that was uh, Kind of. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I hope so. Uh, as uh, um, uh, yes, uh, from the 90s, uh, which um, so as Sasha mentioned, uh, uh, it's uh, UQ modules are related to G hat modules some level. And these are related to D modules I0 on the Grassmannian. Well, this, I guess, has not been covered in these talks, but this is uh, some sort of localization formalism, because uh, The idea being is if you have a d-module uh, on some variety, possibly infinite dimensional, with an action of a Lie algebra, you take global sections and you get a d-module. So this kind of live in the same world. So, but um, 
Yes, but D modules and perverse sheaves are the same as uh, are the same by Riemann Hilbert correspondence. No, no. I mean, the condition for the upper part of these two are so in characteristic zero. That's now all in characteristic ah. zero. So I mean, we don't see Q on the right, right? We don't see it say Q, and it's kind of. That's a very good point. It's the same sort of, of uh, feature that you know someone asks. So why don't we see lambda? It's because for different uh, different regular blocks are equivalent, and also different regular blocks for different rules of unity also equivalent. Um, well, under maybe some mild conditions on the root of unity. Yeah, that's also a great question, but uh, it's not like there is no direct way, but it's much more involved argument. So, but it's Anderson, Janssen, and Zorbil, they provide some sort of combinatorial, so to say, description for these blocks. I mean, developing the Zorbil method, and that implies this. This also relates to this uh, point, I think, that Sasha made, that when you do this integral, yeah, there are some kind of, uh, Things which are maybe related in an obvious way on this side, but maybe not. I think so, so something related was mentioned in Sasha, Sasha's presentation. Can you say a little more about what that first arrow means? This one? Yeah, what's well, that's what uh, Riverman explained, so I don't want to explain much time on that. But, but this is not sort of, th th this is not block by block. So this is, uh, but this is already block by block, so this is. All blocks together. Oh, thank you. And this is uh, for a regular block. Is, uh, ma did you have a question? Uh, oh, yeah, <laughs> that's exactly the subtlety that I wanted to bypass. There is no Langlands duality here. I mean, um, the there is this tricky point that the well for this Fabinius lands, it may land in U G or it may land in U G L. Depending on whether the root, uh, whether L, the order of the root, is prime to the well, six basically or not, whether it's the, uh, more precisely to the uh, multiplicity of the edge in the Dinkin diagram. So it's, yeah, maybe <laughs> let's not get into this. But we can discuss this later. OK, so um, any other questions? Uh, and so, yeah, so, uh, but, but yes, yeah, so uh, another proof, so I just want to say another uh, proof. That was this yeah, ABG. So, uh, I'll keep it and Ginsburg and myself. So maybe um, I actually want to uh, address the following point. So yeah. So and and uh, uh, so here uh, we have still an action as before. We have an action of a Sataki category, but that's exactly parallel to <coughs> the story I presented in the first hour. So if we pull back, every so we have a finite dimensional representation of G, pull it back under quantum Frobenius. And tensor by that, this preserves the block. And I at least if it factors through the adjoint um, a group here. And then um, um, we get an action of the tensor category of Rebg check here, and that can respond to this Satak action. In fact, uh, that's. It's maybe not a central uh, point for the theory, but like, uh, it's kind of like this. So maybe I'll spend a few minutes on this. You can ask, OK, but so um, as Sasha emphasized, 
if you take this full Sataki category, if you take the full uh, derived Sataki category, Um, <coughs> well, then it's not, it's uh, <coughs> something related to Revdichak, but it's not Revdichak. It's something bigger and richer. But on the other hand, this uh, derived attack, it also acts on a derived category uh, of the Grassmannian, which we just uh, said is the same as, uh, uh, you know, regular block. And in either modular or quantum setting. Uh, so okay, so the, this abelian category of perverse shifts acts in the way we described. But what about the rest? And I actually, uh, this also has a nice interpretation on the dual side. And um, so, um, so this um, derived version of this action this derived enhancement of tensoring with Frobenius twist um, <coughs> can be related uh, to, uh, has a nice interpretation uh, in terms of deformation theory. So let me quickly say this, and then this will be transition to this causal duality most of which will uh, well, not in the literature, but yes, we yes, it's kind of the same um, I mean, if P is not too small uh, so uh, Uh, there, rock. Okay. I know you like it, but uh, where is it? No, it's here. Okay. Um, So, uh, so I have uh, like a quick digression in <coughs> deformation theory. So, uh, you may have heard in, you know, first graduate algebra class that deformations are related to second Oxford cohomology. And um, I kind of, usually when they present it, they choose sort of one parametric deformation. And then I'll, you know, we might as well look at the multi-parametric deformation. So let's um, say that, um, uh, let's say we have some algebra if A is an algebra over some polynomial ring. Let's write k of v. And it's a flat algebra. And so we have small a, well, maybe a bar. A bar is a well, tensor, modulo of a. Uh, then you get uh, a map from V star 
Uh, well, star or not star depends on the meaning of this notation. It's also a very confusing point. So yeah, let's see. This way. So this is a, a function on the algebraic variety v, which is the polynomial algebra on the dual. Vector space. Uh, vector space. So I, of course, yeah, you can be much more general, but I want to do to be this. Um, <clears throat> and so uh, then um, I have a map from V to H H. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I used to like uh, an, the opposite notation of KV CMV, but now I switched, thanks to your influence. So, um, so um, in other words, the um, <coughs> essentially Hoch's homology is a sort of um, in morally it's endomorphism of the identity function in the derived category. In other words. Uh, although, I mean, to make it technically a correct statement, you need to work in a proper multiple setting. But at least you have a uh, clearly, uh, so for every um, m in the derived category of a bar modules <coughs> uh, we get an element in x2 uh, from m to m which is functorial in m etc cetera, etc cetera. getting four I mean starting from an element in H2. OK, so far so good. So now I want to <coughs> rewrite the structure. So this uh, can be rewritten. And this is the. Uh, what <coughs> the fashion seems uh, to be uh, as an uh, in the following way, sort of as an action of uh, the monoidal category. of the coherent shifts on the derived scheme, or uh, let me, uh, uh, again, it's uh, fancy words, but it's something very concrete. But, but in practice, it means that, so, so these are DG modules, so modules for the just uh, corresponding Tor algebra. But so the idea is that if you compute the store algebra, you of course uh, uh, so maybe I'll write somewhere else. So you of course recover um, the uh, exterior algebra. Uh, of V star and so here the trivial module is the identity for this um, uh, 
uh, so tor from k to k over uh, k of v is the exterior algebra of v star placed in degree placed in degree minus one. And so, um, so the trivial module k is the unit. I mean, I didn't tell you what the monoidal structure is, but at least what you should clearly see is so. So this is the at x from k to k over this exterior algebra is nothing but the symmetric of the dual thing. I should s you, you say I should say sy sy symmetric yeah. algebra using the sign rule. Uh, you are right, but uh, yeah, maybe I'll uh, leave it. So better. I, I, it's just a little bit. Uh, uh, it, yeah, I guess it's an over naive way to write it down. It's kind of it, it's physically it's exterior algebra, but uh, you know we should be working with this. Uh, sign with a proper sign rule uh, uh, so that notation and then uh, the it's symmetric algebra in the category of <coughs> super vector spaces e to graded vector spaces and yeah that's a good point but, but let me not like uh, change it now but yes uh, so so basically this uh, k will act by identity but then you get um, an x from k to k, I mean v. So v maps to x2 uh, from k to k in that finite category. Uh, <coughs> and uh, so you get mm, x2 from identity to identity, which is what this thing is. So now uh, I'm uh, ready to. Uh, so, so. Uh, so recall from uh, Breiverman's lecture that uh, so d g of O on the Grassmannian well it's related to uh, modules sort of equivariant modules. Uh, over the symmetric algebra placed, so it's you have to, uh, in degree uh, two, uh, equivariant under the group. <coughs> so now this is a kind of thing which appears here. So we can also. Um, rewrite this um, in terms of this fiber product. I'll identify the uh, Lie algebra that is dual using a quadratic form, simplify notation. And so now I'm just saying that this structure comes from uh, an equivalent deformation of the category. And in fact, um, <coughs> so this comes from the deformation uh, picture, uh, which is exactly as the one where A, well, I'll write first in the modular setting and then in the quantum setting. So where A is UG, 
then A bar is this restricted enveloping algebra. And then it's known indeed, and so V is, well, G1. I mean, it should be really the dual thing. And the idea is that uh, the, the um, this is indeed module over this because of this P-center construction. And uh, or uh, in the quantum setting, so A is the U cuts the continue. Uh, and uh, A bar is this small quantum group. And V is, again, um, uh, GL. Uh, it's maybe here, I mean, the module setting is literally the picture of written in the quantum setting. It's um, it's locally isomorphic to that near zero, but uh, uh, locally. And uh, so this is the L center. Hmm? No, I'm saying that in all characteristics. So here, this is a modular setting, this is quantum setting. No, no, but I mean, I'm saying that the not quantum, the about non quantum, but the association by the character is zero, then you don't have a generalization. Non quantum? If you're doing this, no, okay, I see. No, e then there is a different, I mean, this is kind of only relevant. If you consider derived Sataki acti uh, uh, acting on the uh, I zero covariant category, which you interpret as a block, well, that's the question. I mean, so uh, the, this, this <coughs> question I posed, I just said, okay, so we have this equivalence for the block, and then we have an action of the Sataki and also of the derived Sataki category there. And so, where does this action come from? Comes from. It's not about, yes. 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 OK, so I, I'm almost out of time, but maybe I'll just, uh, I am out of time, but the break was long, so I'll just take a couple of minutes. So, um, no, 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 no. This is deformation from the restricted enveloping to the non to the cuts the continue. It's a different deformation. Um, okay, so um, I'll just advertise the other topic and um, and maybe uh, make a joke, and this will be the end. And so, uh, so kind of <coughs> the next topic will have uh, uh, you know will be very much related to this story, and it will kind of um, relate. Uh, Uh, this kind of strange uh, modules of uh, some polynomial algebra, which is, you know, simple structure we all know and like, but now we have this unpleasant feature that this generator sits in some finite homological degree, in degree two. But it will relate it to another setting where it sends it degree zero and everything is sort of, everything is nice. And so this is this uh, causal duality. in, well, four constructible shifts. It's um, uh, uh, some uh, story uh, where you can kind of relate, well, a graded version, that's something I will uh, talk about next time, of a category like the one we considered. Um, derived category of perverse sheaves on something, maybe 
etc. To another category of a similar nature. But it will sort of uh, send this uh, things like GL of 2 will go to GL. And it will have some kind of interesting features um, resembling mirror symmetry in a way. For example, uh, so, so elements in H2 will go to just elements in the center, so and and endomorphisms of identity. But specifically, if you have a C1 of a line bundle here, it will go to the so-called log monodromy. So to, to a line bundle, to a line bundle here, I will associate on the dual side an action of C star, which will kind of um, <coughs> preserve my orbits and uh, uh, with respect to which my sheaves are uh, constructible. And then, you know, if I really, so the sheaves will not be quite equivariant. But if I move in the C star, then I, you know, if I, C star and I have a path from one, then I, uh, this path determines me an isomorphism from one to some element T. Then it determines an isomorphism between F and T star F. And if I go around a loop in C star, then I get an, uh, you know, back to one. Then I get an, a map from F to F, which will be unipotent. And this is, so this map will be called monodromy, and this is the log monodromy. So at least, um, so in mirror symmetry, they say that. Uh, twisting by homological mirror symmetry, they say that twisting by a line bundle should be uh, related to monodromy automorphism, and this is formally similar. So, uh, yeah, so this, you know, this just kind of vague parallel with mirror symmetry is a connection to physics, but uh, these days there is a, a closer connection to physics, so there is this. Symplectic duality, uh, and uh, which comes from 3D mirror symmetry, which uh, has led to new examples of this causal duality formalism. And I will maybe briefly mention this next time. And so, just uh, since this conference is in physics, I should clarify the uh, relation of this story to physics, which I partly did. And uh, to wrap this up, I just will tell a, a story about my personal experience with relating this to physics. So, uh, back in uh, two or eight, I think, when, uh, so this was already uh, known, and so I had this uh, idea, and, but this 3D mirror symmetry and new examples of causal duality, uh, this is maybe the last uh, four years or so. And so that in this 208, I tried to talk to Witten and um, ask if there is some kind of physical uh, uh, theory that this may be connected to, and nothing came out of this conversation. And then more recently, when this uh, 3D mirror symmetry story developed, um, I met Witten at a conference and tried to remind him about this conversation. And he said, that this must be because you didn't explain it properly then. <laughs> <laughs> well, frankly, after that, he, huh? uh, after that, he added what? Huh? Yes, yes, that's what you're there. I see. Okay. That's a great addition. Ah, ah really? Okay. Great. Okay, so then let's stop here for today. Yes. Um, well, actually, a comment. So, so there was that whole discussion about the exterior. Yes. But it's a color algebra, not an algebra. It is actually. It is a both. It's a Hopf algebra. But not with that structure. It's a shuffle product. So it's shuffle a product. Different. Oh. So when you write spin, that's expressing the color of the code product, not the product. I mean, I didn't know about the shuffle, but I mean, maybe I can. Say how I 
so how I think about it. But I mean, this is a good point. That so the way I think about it is that, again, so it's not like due to me, but uh, basically um, the, the general formalism says that if you have a, like a map x to y, then uh, this is x times x over y is a groupoid over x. So I have this anchor map and everything. But now, um, so in the maybe you tip, mm, put some uh, uh, typically put some requirements, and then derived geometry says that you should not think about those requirements. And so, in particular, you can in this framework of derived geometry, you can think of this in the notation also of my presentation: x is zero and y is uh, v. So I get so I get exactly this. So I get this uh, point times point zero times zero over v. It's a sort of derived group point, but derived group point over a point, which is a group. So the conclusion that this is a derived algebraic group, and indeed um, in this language, the monoidal category. I mean, I told you it's monoidal category. I didn't tell you what. Define it really. In this language, the <coughs> Uh, monoidal structure is a uh, convolution of coherent shapes, which in this dual language of symmetric algebra of this, it becomes just usual tensor product of coherent shapes. Yeah, thanks. Any other questions? Yeah, here everything is commutative. Yes, yes. That's right. Yes. Any other questions? Okay, thanks. Yeah.